Oh, make this. Make this. Ah! Could have been back up by 14. This is the Rubble Boots Podcast, Season 8 of the podcast. Brought to you by BestSafe.net. BestSafe.net. Thank you for joining us. Feel sure you have no regret. Even we can't believe we're not canceled yet. We're gonna tell some stories. We're gonna have a good time. And you know for sure, we're gonna have a laugh. <laughs> this is the podcast. This is the podcast. It's 100% free. 100%. That's it. This is the podcast. Love it. Love it. This is the podcast. That's it. Love it. This is the podcast. That's it. This is the podcast. Love it. Love it. Love it. This is the pod. What? 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 This is the podcast. This is the pod. This is the pod. That's so I'd like to start tonight's pod by uh, uh, reading a text from an old friend. I shared this with you guys uh, earlier this week, but I'm going to share it with our, our beloved listeners. It's from Chris Beaudry, who, of course, is a longtime fan of the pod, the uh, former assistant coach of the Humboldt Broncos and a dear friend to all of us. All around good guy. Um, all around good guy. Also, if I get stra- distracted tonight, stuff, it's not because I have dementia. It's because uh, we're watching the Raptors. Uh, we're doing an early primetime version of the Rubber Boots podcast yeah. because people demanded a primetime version. Even though when they listen to it, they can listen to whatever the hell they want. Uh, we're doing it on uh, Monday night because Jimmy has to go pick up his uh, daughter, Gracie, from university in the usual Tuesday recording slot. Nice. That's code for golfing. So here we are in primetime. So the Raptors, it's like you, the listener, are seeing into the past because you know the outcome of this game. The Raptors season could, be could over. well be over. Probably over by the time you watch or this. Very or maybe much not. Play. Or maybe it's historic. Maybe by the time this podcast <laughs> is over, we will know the fate of the Raptors. Okay, where was I? In the middle of the text? Yes. Oh, yes. So Chris Beaudry. I hadn't really started the text. Uh, Chris Beaudry, uh, there was a storm in Saskatoon when he sent me this last week. And uh, so he stayed. He fell asleep. I guess I should read the text instead of like Probably. telling the story by myself, yeah. right? Uh, storm in Saskatoon last night I fell asleep on the couch at my mom's place all of a sudden there's a knock on the door I wake up but I'm just falling asleep so I'm really out of it so I'm all foggy and I just open the door because that's what I normally do at home not thinking I'm in the city Chris Beaudry of course is a farmer lives in the country where people are trusting there's a uh, a high young female uh, who kind of uh, pushes her way in the door I can tell she's high on meth I can see she has prison tattoos. She's a little chunky. And I see she has something in her pockets and won't take one hound out of her pocket. A little terrifying, right? I I added that part. He didn't say that part. Uh, She asked to use my phone, so I hand it to her. She can't find who she's looking for, so I call a cab for her. I give her some water, and then she asks for food. Still got the hand in the pocket. I uh, give her a jar of pickles, and she eats the whole thing. Uh, she asked to go on Facebook with, with my phone, so I hand it over. Finally, the cab shows up and she leaves. She ate the whole jar of pickles in under two minutes. Ooh. Just f- chomping and smiling the whole time. Going to town on the pickles. At that point, I was thinking, if this is who kills me, I'm not going to be happy at all. That was the end of the text. That would be a bad way to go. <laughs> so, hold on. Did she kill him? He's dead. She didn't kill him. He lived. She, she got in the cab and left and she didn't do anything. Except they ate the pickles. I, I said, I just said WTF, and he said, I was rattled. Uh, she loved those pickles. <laughs> Why is that what he offered up? Well, imagine. Like, was, all he had. I don't know. So I guess all he just, he that's what he first grabbed in the fridge. I think he was probably a little nervous and didn't want to maybe give her anything better. So just offer the pickles, and she chopped down those pickles one by one. I said, did you, did you know it was a knife or a gun in her pocket? He says, no, I could have been a ham sandwich. <laughs> but but he, he said, it's... His survival instincts, he saw the sketchy, you know, the prison tattoos, the sketchy meth behavior, yeah. and he went into survival mode, and survival mode for Chris Beaudry is pickles. Well, at least you know she's not going to cramp up, so that's good. <laughs> and pickles are a delicious snack. It would be terrifying, though. I can't even imagine someone just bust, busting into my house. That would be a terrifying experience. You know, Chris is a tough, tough, sasky boy. I want to answer the door. 
I scare easily. Well, he, I know Lester, but he's saying he wouldn't answer the door normally, but he kind of forgot he was in the city, and he's just like, right, oh, right. I'm on the farm, it's my neighbor. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Anyway, look. Jimmy, I sent you a video. I think maybe I sent everyone the video of uh, me uh, being uh, scared at work. And uh, that is how I would handle a stranger breaking into my house with uh, screams and swear words. For the context of people at home, Rennie, uh, who's one of our cameramen, yeah. and he, Rennie's an, an idiot. I say that lovingly, yes. somewhat lovingly, Puffy. Yes. Uh, He's our jib guy. I think I've, I've spoken about Rennie before on the podcast. He runs the jib camera and he does, uh, he makes funny comments the entire show while we're on. And he does silly jokes. So he's practical jokes. Yes. And he tries to scare Puffy and I on a routine basis. Basically, when the night is over and we're like going to dressing room or going to the parking lot, he will jump out. And, and I him. never get I never get scared, but he oh, he got me he there. ran around the car on Puffy, and Puffy was legitimately terrified. Yeah. I screamed and <laughs> swore. You did you did scream and swear. Uh, Raptors by eight. We were. I was gonna say people that don't know. Uh, uh, out at CTV, Agent Court Studios North, I should say. It's quite dark at times, and we have had some coyote problems, and you never know. Puffy, I don't, uh, I don't blame you for Spe being scared. Speaking of coyotes, uh, what do you got there, Puff? Hello, puppy. This is our new puppy. Oh, look it. What, and what's, what's the name of the puppy again? She's so cute. Welly for Wellington, and she's Welly. a terror. She goes, I, like, I think she might got the rabies already. Huh? Oh. <laughs> she oh, goes nuts. Get them started young. Yeah, like, uh, you, can you tell if they have the rabies? Do they? Because uh, she looks. She looks and they, I think it's just called the zoomies when you're a kid. You just go like Hugo still has the zoomies after dinner or something, or when he gets excited, yeah. he just runs back and forth all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call it the zoomies. Well, she but she likes to bite too. <laughs> well, maybe it's the rabies then. I used to have a dog named. Uh, there you go, Otis. Uh, the one dog that never lasted with us after our, our family dog Thumper died, uh, very tragically, uh, we, we got a dog named Otis and Otis had some problems right from the beginning and Otis would just run around like that, like around the yard or the house full blast, but then he'll forget to make the turn yeah. and just crash into the wall. Ooh. Oof. And, uh, so we had actually, and we had to actually get rid of Otis because he was, uh, he was a troubled dog. Uh, so I hope your what dog. What get rid of? Take him out to the pasture, or put him out to pasture. No, I think uh, uh, the late, the late Big Jim, James Forbes the fifth. He, uh, I think he uh, just took him back to from whence he was purchased. Yes. I don't know where that was. Some sort of puppy mill, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so Welly, uh, Welly doesn't have the rabies. He's she's gonna be fine. But you got to train. You got to take care of that stuff, right? You're not allowed to yeah. do the old school stuff, like put their face in their dog poop and. <laughs> Wow, I'm gonna say <laughs> he can't beat them. What a shame! He can't. What are you, you talking can't set about? Set straight like I used to. No. Now you gotta tell them no. Well, I think I told you guys I sent Hugo away to no. juvie, right? You remember? Yes. Remember that? Yeah. Did it work? Well, it, it did work, except I didn't know at the time. Like this, this juvie had come highly recommended to me. Said, "Hey, you got to send him to these people out in I don't know where the hell they were, sort of Keswick kind of way." And uh, what they, I didn't know. So I just blindly went for it because uh, Hugo was having issues like Welly there and uh, wouldn't listen to anything and came back trained, but they were using that. It's kind of like the choke collar. Oh, the one that stabs. And, and it is, no, it, it wasn't. It's not a choke. I shouldn't say it's not a choke collar. It's not a stab collar, but it's the, it is the chain one that gives a little tug or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's the way they mm -hmm. train them. And I didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, and so I didn't know. So they actually trained Hugo like that for a week. And, uh, but it worked like it got him. We got him back in the crate because they crate trained him again. Yeah. And I like, basically taught him how to sit. So that was 1500 bucks to teach him how to sit. Basically. That's pretty good. You, you couldn't do that with a treat and just <laughs> wow. put it over his head. You couldn't do the, the Essentially. Way. Yes, we could. We could have. For, for like the, uh, the bathroom training though, what we did with our dog was, uh, you restrict where they can go so they can only pretty much go to the back door. And they won't pee or poo basically where they're going to sleep. So if you restrict the area they have access to in the house at first, then they'll want to go outside, and that's how they learn. So 
Right. So well, my dog only pooed in the house one time, and he did it on purpose. Huh. Like, I pissed him off, I took something away, he ran onto the carpet, and he just <laughs> staring at me. Really? Willow only, wow. peeps, Willow, Willow only poops in the house two to three times a day. <laughs> Please well, tell me, though. She's this, old, though, so it's a little different. Welly, that's all Welly does is poop and pee in the house. Yeah, Hugo took us, uh, it took us a, a year. <laughs> and a stint in juvie. Is that a smart dog, your dog? Is that a smart Poodle, breed? Yeah, I think they're pretty smart. Uh, poodles are really yeah. smart, so I think... Uh, yeah. yeah, you'll be all right. My, my, I had a Jack Russell, the same thing. He never, like, he peed once and that was it because they're brilliant. But uh, French Bulldogs are dumbass dogs, so it, it doesn't help. Ouch. Um, welcome to the Rubber Boots Podcast, brought to you by our friends at BetSafe.net. Check them out if you uh, haven't. Um, <laughs> why don't we do... I haven't, uh, I don't think we've thrown to this. I usually start the pod and just start talking. So we haven't heard one of Lester's uh, great themes in uh, a while. Let's call the the week that was. Let's discuss the week that was with James Dunning and the Rebel Boots Podcast Crew. So uh, just uh, fresh material, uh, just uh, a couple of hours ago, got off the plane from uh, New York City. Come on, come on, cool, cool, Jimmy. Tell us about the times in New York City. He's kind of cute. Something like did that. Did you That's just good. write that? <laughs> Pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. That's good. I did. I did. That's a, yeah. it's my own original song. Um, went to New York City with Brooksy. I don't want to give you all the boring details. I tend to talk too long on the pod. Let me go through a few uh, highlights for you. Who had uh, day one of shopping, Jimmy spending more than Brooksy? Who had that in the pool? No, but that's Anyone? impossible. Nobody. No chance. I went, you know what? We went down to Soho. Yeah. Oh. And uh, all the little shops down in Soho. And I just figured, Brooksy brought a blouse. She got off to a quick start. She had a blouse like 15 minutes in. And then I just said, you know, I just I can't beat him. Join him. Nice. I went to this funky little store and I saw a hoodie I liked, a little baby blue hoodie. And then I liked some shoes, some little... I got some shoes, and then suddenly I was rolling. And once I started rolling, because I only shop like once every year or something like that. I'm sort of similar to that. Boom! One. I was, I was like that, that two of those, and then Brooksy got even, at, even on uh, Saturday at the uh, Fendi, <laughs> the Fendi store. So anyway, cool. now um, did you buy age appropriate clothing, or did you buy clothing for young people? Yeah, I think probably for young people again. Uh, I had a, like a like I said a baby blue hoodie. You can't even wear a hoodie at any age, right? Uh, yeah, hoodies are all good. Okay. And the shoes are just like running shoes that you could wear with, uh, you know, out to dinner somewhere. You know, like they're kind of like one color blue suede kind of things. Ath- athletic um, sneakers, like an athletic dress dress shoes type of that type of look. Yeah, Vince is the brand. Anybody know Vince? I I, I like those. When it's a I singular name like that, you know it's expensive. Now, is New York uh, City back? Is it back and booming? Yes. And the weekend was absolutely fantastic. As a matter of fact, I don't want to be presumptuous to say that like it was the first booming weekend. But if you think about it, you know, kind of the first nice weekend of spring in New York from what my friends told me. It was, you know, 16 sunny every day. It was just going off on every the thing that amazes me about new york city and i haven't been for fun probably in five or six years is and i've forgotten like it doesn't matter if you're in manhattan no matter what neighborhood you're in it's alive there's no such thing as like a quiet neighborhood it's alive all the time and we went so i was staying with my buddy harv kawar who's the council general he's like the top ranking diplomat in new york city nice. which is a mind-boggling thing for me because he's the biggest idiot of all my friends that's great uh i shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't say this because he he has like a split personality where he can he can be serious and meet with prime ministers and presidents and, and he's a brilliant guy speaks like five languages but i know him as the high school idiot that he was right yeah and so it's just hilarious to me that is he's the consul general he, like he throws out pitches at games and drops bucks and you know meets with presidents oh. and such so uh we stayed at his place uh little new york bar always awkward staying at friends i find it's not my favorite thing uh because you know just the whole thing the sh- you know it's new york so they have a like a fairly large like three or four bedroom but it's still 
tight and you know sharing bathrooms and showers and things it's not but uh, with know. those new york hotel prices sometimes it's the way to go yeah and, you know, we know we did we did well, i think we we did well there but uh doorman too it's where every every place has a doorman in new york city Pretty much i knew the guy by the end freddie what's going on oh mr james nice to see you again today how long you be staying it's just it's crazy doorman could you be a doorman hey hey wait wait, wait a second you live here of course i live here i've lived here for 20 years now, if you don't let me in, I'm going to call the police and have you arrested. <laughs> you think you're better than me? You think a doorman would be I a good I could be a doorman. I could be a kick-ass doorman. Yeah, Lester, I think, would be a good doorman. I don't know if I'm personable enough. I think you are. Lester would be a great oh, yeah, doorman. Lester would be I mean, a I'd, I'd, I'd be like, hello, Mr. Dutty. Nice to see you today. How's the things? I heard uh, Brooksy out shopped you the other day. What about that? That's pretty good. At what point does he slip you the 50? Because you know J James is a generous tipper. <laughs> no, James would be like, ah, oh, the matter of the cash. Uh, didn't realize it was Christmas. <laughs> the doorman would know all the secrets too, right? Oh, yeah. All the secrets. All the secrets. Lester, do you think you could handle, as a single man, uh, do you think you can handle, what if you lived in a... A young shishi. Uh, what if you're the doorman at that place where there was a lot of young single ladies? And as a doorman, probably one of the doorman rules is you can't fraternize with the the occupants. Could you handle mm -hmm. that? Sounds like an unwritten. Well, you know? I mean, listen, you, you, you got to do your job. But the funny thing is, where I live now, I actually kind of live in the gated community. So I'm on the other side of that, where the gate person can let a lady in or see that the lady leaves you know what i mean so i've had to be careful in the past making sure that i left left time make sure there were no more the shift changes everything <laughs> <laughs> that's <just> hilarious <laughs> i guess gate gate guys are the new doorman in like you know in most most cities or suburbs and not that i, I don't live in a gated community like the lester <laughs> you have a concierge concierge excuse me <laughs> it rolls yeah. his eyes Wow. <laughs> Jimmy's um, legitimately jealous right now. I know. He's, like, he's, right, he's going to hire a guy to sit outside his house. <laughs> I am. Buffy, are you available? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I can do weekends. Oh, I think my, my battery's going to die. Let's, you guys continue to talk. i got to plug this stuff. Oh, we always nail that. Part. This is the best part. Always. Always, <laughs> always, always the best. Like, fortunately, I have a, uh, a plug right here. So uh, saw some uh, saw a few celebrities in my time in New York City. Really? Uh, not not like a, just an array of. Uh... There we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, on my flight in, uh, maybe not on my flight, but in the airport. Uh, uh, now I'm gonna have a brain cramp. Uh, Kemba Walker, nice. uh, basketball player. Nice. Mm. Uh, I probably wouldn't have recognized him. I mean, it was obviously he was a basketball player. If he didn't have a, a backpack that uh, had a, because uh, he had a hoodie up and a mask, but his backpack had Oklahoma City's uh, tag on it, Oklahoma Thunder, uh, and it said K Walker. So I kind of figured it out. Smart that I am, you know. <laughs> I, I honestly sports, thought sports commentator that he, he would become your dad, and you're like, well, he was wearing his jersey on the on the flight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was Kim Walker. Uh, and then uh, walking downtown, we were in Soho, and PK Subban, oh, nice. I uh, ran ran yeah. into. I don't want to go a little TMZ, but with a, uh, you know, of course, I had the quite uh, notorious breakup with Lindsey Vaughn. He was with a, a new young lady, oh. uh, who he introduced me to, and I can't remember her name, but she seemed extremely nice. Now, did she look and like Lindsey Vaughn? That sometimes can happen in the breakups. No, she did not. She was different. Different, different, completely different looking, uh, different looking was woman. She a brunette. PK. So uh, she was a brunette. She was a slim, slim brunette. That's all I got for TMZ was she today. A skier? Subban was slim brunette in Soho. <laughs> but ning, but ning. Um, <laughs> anyway, PK uh, PK was looking good. He's stylish as always. He was wearing all red. It was a nice day. He had like a red t shirt and red designer shorts. Like I'm sure it was like a designer outfit from somebody, but. Uh, PK looked good. Had a little conversation with PK. He's nice. doing well. Nice. Uh, and then my flight home, and there was this, uh, I hate to say it, from behind, I was the elderly lady, but I guess it's true. And uh, she was waiting on a wheelchair, and so I helped her move aside, and then I realized it was Rhea Perlman. 
Rhea Perlman. Oh, From, my goodness. Uh, Cheers? From Cheers. Yes, Danny, DeVi- yeah. Dan- Danny DeVito's oh. wife, yeah. Rhea Perlman. Who ex-wife. Is, uh, maybe, maybe you can... Are they ex? ex- I think they... I thought they split up, didn't they? Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Would Rhea Perlman be like... She, she was quite old on Cheers. Like, she was probably in her 50s on Cheers, right? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cheers was a while ago. She's born in uh, 1948, so yeah, she's... she's yeah, she's so 74. 74 yeah. years old, Rhea Perlman. And uh, I was confirmed, by the way, when I uh, saw the... When we debar- disembarked from the plane and there was a guy waiting with a wheelchair with a sign that said Rhea Perlman. Oh, so there you go. I thought she was wearing an Oklahoma City bag with uh, Carl <laughs> Perlman. <laughs> Funny. Uh. Funny. Uh, what else happened? I went to see, went to Broadway and saw the Michael Jackson uh, show, Ooh. Lester. Lester right? saw the <laughs> saw the Michael Jackson show. So I have some thoughts about this. Uh, we went to the matinee, Brooksy and I, and Kawar, and uh, uh, the music was awesome. I would recommend it for the music. The guy who played there was three different Michael Jacksons. Uh, sort of goes through the life story, you know, a little bit. So there's three different Michael Jacksons, a young Michael Jackson, a middle Michael Jackson, and the real Michael Jackson. Well, before he died, Michael Jackson. And uh, he was awesome. They were all awesome. The kid was fantastic. Uh, the story was just ridiculously stupid. Uh, you know, Broadway is just always like they, you know, you get, they, when they do a musical and they're just, it's the best of somebody, they just want to put the songs and they make some warped story to make all the songs work. Mm-hmm. And in this case, it was like he was preparing for the Help Me Out Lester, the tour uh after victory tour uh oh it was like it, champ- it was the bad tour no no it was around the bad tour but it was his it was after his hair was on fire uh it was it was an that, album that would have been it because that was the because the victory tour was the same tour he did after thriller and the only other record after that was bad oh no but was it it was called something else uh dangerous tour dangerous, dangerous tour? okay what's been dangerous then yeah yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, but the whole story was, I guess he did a MTV was allowed in behind the scenes. And uh, so the whole, the whole story was him rehearsing for the tour and this MTV crew uh, trying to get inside information on him. And anyway, so the music was great, but you know, they glossed over all of the stuff. <laughs> Basically, it was just like, there's, there's a lot of controversy right now in my life. Uh, sorry, that's my best Michael Jackson I can do. Uh, Terrible. And uh, that's so they glossed all over all of that, and that, and that whole part of it was ridiculous. But the actual performances, brilliant. Yeah. But I, I don't think I'd expect them to put that stuff into the Broadway. Musical. I know. I mean, I know. But it was the whole thing is kind of weird. You're standing up at a plot. People are standing up and cheering and singing and dancing. And I mean, I guess that's okay. I mean, I love the music too. I know you love the music, Lester. It's just, it's, it's kind of weird, right? The well, whole when thing the story's weird. about him, I guess it's still kind of weird because, like, you're celebrating him and not just the music. But I don't know. Well, and as well, you know, they show uh, Joe Jackson like slapping him as a child, and Joe Jackson is portrayed as the way he was, which is a hard ass character. Who so they? It's basically sympathetic to Michael the entire time. And so, I don't know. I just felt a little weird watching it. Well, I would it, but, assume uh, that to have the rights for the music, it probably has to be that way. Yeah. There was also no ending to the story. Like, he kept popping pills, though. He was popping pills the whole time. Oh, okay. Uh, like, that's part of the storyline. And so, yeah. and you know, the people behind the scenes are worried about whether he's going to pull off the tour because he's popping pills. And then they don't even address it. Like, it just, the show just ends. Everybody gets up and cheers. <laughs> so well, strange. at the end of the day, though, ultimately, it's well documented that A, he was an addict, and B, drug abuse ultimately killed him. So I don't think you really have yeah, to. Yeah, so that, you know. Yeah. I, I guess they just took a little snippet of his life, and it was probably the easiest way to design a production where you could have a very fairly simple set of rehearsing for a tour, and, you know, they'd have some numbers that were you know lights and fancy signs and all that kind of stuff but anyway I, i'd recommend it just if you love the music but besides that the story was awful can you um, can you just indulge me for else? one second here can you indulge me for one yeah, second of course buddy i just got to do this yes she's out of my life she's out of my life and i don't know where 
to laugh or cry. I don't know whether to live or die. And it cuts like a knife. Tito, don't tease me. She's out of my life. That was beautiful. There we go. Right. That was beautiful. <laughs> Now That's me doing me. Eddie Murphy, by the way. <laughs> now, it's, now it's my turn. I see you want to be starting something. You got to be starting something. Sorry. I will not try to challenge your uh, musical abilities, Lester. That was beautiful. That song is actually in there. There's a few songs I didn't know. Um, I was disappointed that they did, they did you... The Way You Make Me Feel, which is one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs, mm-hmm. they did it as like an instrumental, uh, but they never did it like they never performed that one, but... The rest of them are all in there, the Billy Jeans and the Beat It's and all that stuff. So there you go. Nice. Um, what else happened in New York? Yeah, I just love I love that city, man. I, like every street corner, there's a restaurant yeah. or a pub, and they're all jammed. And you, and we went, so Kawar and I, the other thing they have is like the one thing that uh, they've done over the last few years, I guess de Blasio, the mayor, whatever, they put bike lanes in a lot of places. And so you can go, you know, you get the Lyft app and you can go get a bike. And they have the. Uh, has anybody ridden those uh, battery powered bikes yet? Uh, I tried it. I haven't. They're, they're dangerous. I don't like keep going like this because you don't actually do that on the bike. But uh, <laughs> they are. I got to get me one of those because they're. I'm not a real cyclist guy. I'm not. I'm not into it. I hate the uphills. But these battery powered bikes. So you just you pedal and it just like whew, like we went two hours around New York City everywhere in New York City and until my bike died in the last and once it dies. It's not good. It's like becomes three times as heavy. But <laughs> it's a real bike all of a sudden. The rest of the time you're pedaling like you're biking, <laughs> but it's like it's super powered. Every time you, you hit the pedals, it goes woo, and you don't even have to work, and you're not even tired. And so we went to we went to Soho, and we went to Midtown, and we went to uh, uh, Chelsea, and we went to the Upper East Side and the Lower West Side, and everywhere in the entire city, basically on bikes over. Uh, uh, a two-hour period, and man, I just man, I just love everything about that city. So, the anyway, my big statement here is I'm I'm moving to New York City. Nice. Oh, now, now, uh, I'm, wow. I'm moving to Do you York think City. they'll allow those bikes at the Tour de France one day? <laughs> that would be amazing. Do you think I, with a fully powered one of those bikes, could win the Tour de France? I, I hope so. I don't know. Well, it's very funny because I'm quite sure somebody got burned for having a motorized bike uh, many years ago. No. No. In an actual race, that's incredible. In a, if if not if not in the Tour de France, another another bike race. Yeah, that's awesome though. You yeah, to win. Uh, that's I gotta hand it to that dude. But uh, yeah, anyway, those uh, electronic bikes. Somebody uh, somebody write us and tell me uh, what uh, brand of uh, battery powered bike I should buy because Jimmy's going out and getting one of those suckers right away, and one for Brooksy as well. Nice. Um, the only problem was Brooksy was kind of, that was uh, Sunday morning and Brooksy was kind of hoping to spend the day with me and uh, we were gone on the bikes for most of the day. So <laughs> we had to do some sucking up after that. That's why we may have ended up at the Fendi store later. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was about it. It was awesome. Rode the subway everywhere. Uh, Did that feel at Brooksy, all nervous? <laughs> a little bit at first because of what happened recently yeah. there. I was a little bit apprehensive, but you know, you realize right away that was a million to one and, and, uh, Funny, guys come on the subway, like the street performers come on the subway and like put their hat down and do like that, you know, yeah. climbing up the pole parkour and music and dancing stuff. and stuff. Yeah, parkour and stuff. And we had this guy do it for us. So I gave him five bucks and then we went to dinner and had a couple of bottles of wine with Kawar and his wife. And then uh, Brooksy, uh, Brooksy went on and got on the subway on the way home and she she tried to do her own little performance oh, to get some money. Nice. I, 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 I videotaped it, but she'll, uh, she'll probably kill me if I... Uh, I think we need Show to see to that. I think you actually do. Oh. So, here we go. There's a little bit of. Yes. Let me just see if I can get to some of it. There's Brooksy uh, performing on the uh, New York uh, subway. Oh, it's hard to hard in the light to, to see it. There she oh. is, <laughs> swinging around. She seems swinging around the pole. comfortable on the pole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you see the woman behind her. She ends up kicking her at some point. That didn't. Oh, that didn't goodness. go so well. Yeah. Good times. Uh, I tried to get her to do like the parkour. <laughs> Make sure she's not seeing that. Um, yeah, so uh, fantastic weekend. Everybody else had a good week here? 
Yeah, I had a new dog, so that's all I'm worried about. Well, that's 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 super exciting. It is exciting. I'm so excited! I'm so excited! I'm so scared. Uh, poor Darian. We left uh, Willow home with Darian because we can't handle living leave the guilt of leaving Willow with the uh, dog sitter anymore um, because of her issues. And Darian, <laughs> Darian texts me at like I heard the beep go at like 5 a.m. on. On Saturday, she's like, Dad, you got to help me. I haven't slept at all. Willow's peed, peed like nine times, and she won't stop crying because you're not here. <laughs> help me, Dad. Help me. <laughs> it was a rough weekend for Darian. Oh, before we do uh, things I saw on Twitter, uh, one more thing from New York I've forgotten to tell you. The one thing about the city, as the you know the stories go that people aren't friendly, we, we were sitting on the subway, Brooksy and I, and a, a woman gets on, uh, attractive-looking uh, woman of color, who sits down next to me and uh, she's got one of those pictures that, you know, the, the, the caricatures that the artists draw on the streets. Yeah, sure, of course. And so I said, hey, can I, see the, can, I, can I see your picture? And so she holds it up to me and I'm like, oh, that's nice. I said, they did a good job, but I said, you're more attractive in person than your picture. I was just being a complimentary. And she goes, you are not from here, are you? <laughs> and I, I, I said, no. She goes, people are not nice here. <laughs> You don't understand. I said, really? She goes, no, people don't talk to each other here. And I said, well, that's, that's a real shame or whatever. I said, I just want to tell you you had a nice picture. She goes, no, I appreciate it very much, but you are definitely not from here. <laughs> but, but people say the same thing about Toronto. I mean, that made me sad, though. Like, it's like no one had ever spoken to her ever before on the subway. She's Ever. exaggerating. And she, and she was so shocked that I, you know, someone had something nice to say. You think she's been riding so. the subway for years with that particular picture hoping to get noticed? <laughs> Waiting for it? Just waiting. <laughs> Maybe. Praying. Uh, things that I saw on Twitter, stuff. Go ahead. Freaky pigs, strange chicks, world affairs, polar bears, fake news, nice shoes, big boobs, jack dudes, all of these things and more as a sad on the shitter. Things that I saw on Twitter. We're starting here with some big, big news uh, that's evolving as we speak, but it's a Rubber Boots react. 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 We are reacting to Elon Musk purchasing Twitter, uh, now rumored to be for about $44 billion in cash. It's looking pretty official. Uh, obviously, this started with Elon uh, first What's just... What's $44 billion in cash? Like, is that even possible? Well, Elon did, uh, clearly. He's the richest man in the world. But $44 billion in cash? Like, I understand when people thought, are worth, like, yeah. $100 billion because they're their company and all this stuff. But, like, to actually have it in cash seems ridiculous. I, I actually thought the same thing, Puff, because all these net worths are yeah. usually, it's all it's all tied up in stuff. Mm -hmm. But I guess, yeah. you know, when you have whatever hundreds of billions like Elon has. Like, Jimmy, your net worth is probably, like, 17, 18 million. You probably yeah. have like eleven dollars <laughs> to make That's, a cash purchase. I mean, the, the the second part is more true than you you will you will ever know. The first part, yeah. Uh, but you're right. To, and by the way, I mean we're reacting to something on Monday that probably people will be sick of when they listen to it on Friday or Saturday. But uh, it's definitely happening, and uh, it, it's remarkable that he just feels like he's doing this on a on a whim because he likes Twitter and he doesn't like some of the crap about it. And uh, obviously he's smarter than that. And he thinks he can, he can make money off well, of it. But the but, only thing uh, is, so hold on, say everyone now in the world just decided to, let's just not use Twitter anymore. Right. Would he lose 40. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen to a degree. Like, would it just become completely a useless thing to own. Like there's that would, I mean, like, hypothetically, that would happen. Yeah, it would like, be a where, useless. Where's your value in it if everyone tomorrow just said, "Yeah, we're done. No more Twitter. I'm gonna, we're gonna go use uh, uh, anything else." But just I not mean, use look Twitter to anymore. a to a degree, and it wasn't triggered by any particular sale. But like, what happened to MySpace, which was probably one of the first social medias, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it can happen. Like, I, I don't think his purchase of it would probably depreciate it that much, but. It's just interesting that it's going from a publicly traded company to a privately one and where one person's going to have all of the uh, control. And like to me, does Twitter have like the question for me is like does Twitter have as an entity that big a responsibility as to who they'll sell to? 
Like, because now we, they're literally putting it in one person's hands where it's a very influential medium. Uh, I mean, if you're someone on there and you've used this as your primary social media and you have millions of followers, this sale can affect, can definitely affect, you know, your business, your, all, all kinds of things for you. What so, about Donald I, Trump? I, I, I would guess stuff that they're, uh, you know, the Twitter board would have put something in the deal to have some sort of assurances that it wasn't just going to be Elon going completely rogue, that there had to be some sort of, you know, quality insurance. For 44 that billion, given like how much restrictions is he going to have? No, but you do have some sort of moral duty somewhat, I think, in there to an extent. But you're probably right. The things that he's talking about, if he gets rid of the bots and, you know, he's talking, they're talking about a check mark for everybody so that you are responsible for your tweets. Mm -hmm. I, I'm for that. If you, if everybody's verified on there, you have to be verified. Then, like I find Instagram a much happier place than Twitter because it's there's not for whatever reason there doesn't seem to be. I'm sure there are bots on Instagram, but I haven't run across them nearly as much. And uh, not nearly as much vitriol either. Yeah, and you just have if you have a if you have a face. A name and a face behind your comments you make. Like, I think it'll get have, rid of some of the stupidity. People do have accounts for Instagram. I think the difference between those two more it's the way it's structured. Whereas Twitter, you see what everyone's writing about a particular thing a thread, and Instagram, right. people kind of go more towards what they actually what they're actually into. So I, I think those groups and such are more separated on Instagram. But you, st I mean, you yeah. still see a lot of crap out there in general. So anyway, I don't I don't trust the dude very much, but uh, we'll give him a chance and see what he can do. That, that's that's how I feel about it, James. I, I'm not happy about this at all. I think, um, you know, with somebody with that much money has a lot of influence. And, and I'm, listen, I'm not saying he has any sinister um, plans, but at the same time, I think you can see a lot of people who are celebrities and just everyday people just go, okay, he owns it, I'm out. So I'll be interested to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I wonder if it's going to be that divisive, like right off the top. But it, I guess it could be. Um, I don't know. He doesn't seem super unpopular amongst the actual celebrities and stuff like that. The one thing I saw was a lot of people online saying uh, like what he should have used the forty four billion for, like that it's ridiculous to spend spend it on something that you know it just almost looks off of a whim that you could do so much good with it. Uh, like, what do you guys think of that? Is that somebody else's place to tell him where to spend his money, or not really? Although he 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 did it to himself because he said he would solve world hunger if uh, the UN or whoever it was uh, told him what the price of solving world hunger was, and then they gave him a price and he didn't do anything with it, and well, it was thirty one bi thirty one billion dollars or something like that, and he said he'd solve world hunger within a year. And then he ended up spending uh, forty four million dollars. Well, maybe this on is part a, of the process. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time on Elon, but I think Lester's probably right. We're all screwed. Oh, we'll definitely need something other than things that I saw on Twitter from Lester. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on to some bet safe. <laughs> Breaking, breaking news. news. Breaking news. Breaking news. And this is some breaking news on a topic we covered before. <laughs> hey, hey, Lester, is Lester's delay in the sense that it, it is a delay? So, well, when Lester, when you say breaking news, do you think you're saying it at the same time as the rest of everybody? Yes, I do. Is it not? Is not? <laughs> it's Seriously? So, it's really oh, I funny. Thought it was a bit. <laughs> I thought it was a bit too because everybody goes breaking news, and then a second later, Lester goes breaking news. <laughs> Rubber oh, boots no. reacts. Reacts. Breaking news. <laughs> I love it. You just heard it. Uh, Raptors by thirteen. That's as we continue our live, our live that Raptors podcast. News. This is unbelievable. Uh, this is happening. Raptors by thirteen with three forty. Are you ready to declare Puffy now? I'm declaring that the Raptors will be the first team that comes back from 03 I'm in the history of the NBA. It is happening. It is happening. We are watching yes. history right. unfold. All right. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, stop. Sorry. We are witness. All right, our bet safe breaking news is regarding the Tinder swindler, the Ooh. man by the Ooh. name of Simon mm -hmm. Lviv, I guess. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, he could now be actually facing prison time for uh, after an arrest yes. warrant was issued against him for an incident back in 2019. Basically, he used a fake driver's license uh, when his luxury car got stuck on a beach in Spain. Uh, cop suspects that it wasn't legit, but he wasn't arrested at the time. Car got towed, they let him go. Then finally, once they summon the uh, fake person's name, obviously no one shows up to court. Now they're looking for him. 
Uh, so apparently he might be facing some time. Simon, however, who uh, just openly talks to TMZ, uh, told them <laughs> that he's already served time for using a fake passport in 2019, so he can't be charged for this twice. So he's basically That's... invoking double wow. jeopardy, even though like one's a passport, the other one's an ID. So I don't know... Uh, not sure he's got that one all figured out. Uh, so he's saying I did it. I did it, but they can't get me on it because yeah, yeah. I already It feels already like OJ served. where they're going after him for other crimes. <laughs> yeah, Wait a second, though. Poor guy. With, with, I know double jeopardy is... Double jeopardy is you can't get tried for the same Crime. thing. Twice, but yeah. wouldn't that be... But if you if I was to murder Stoff... Yes. And then uh, serve... Let's say it was manslaughter because I made up an excuse that he deserved it. Mm. So I served two and a half years... But then I'd also murdered Puffy, and they find out about that later. No, that's not I'd double jeopardy. That's not how it works. No, no, that's a, no. well. That's what no. he's. Uh, that's what Simon's making it seem like that it could be. Yeah, but he's done. But no, he's done two separate crimes, yeah. right? Even though it's the same thing. Like I he, think he gets away with it. He's a bit of an idiot. Uh, however, he actually was swindled himself recently, nice. where a uh, someone pretending to be a Meta employee. That's Facebook. Yeah. Charged him more than six thousand dollars to get his Instagram account verified, and it turned out to be a scam. Nice. So, is Karma finally catching up with him, or do you think he's gonna continue to weasel his way on through? I think I think maybe it's his time. I think it's it's kind of funny that after all the horrible things he's done to all those women, that you know, if it if he gets brought down by parking his car illegally on a beach or whatever, mm. it's pretty funny. <laughs> But it just goes to show you, though, like it goes back to even Al Capone times. You know, they didn't nail Al Capone because of of the organized right. crime. They got him on tax evasion. You know, that's yeah. right. what has to happen sometimes. Yeah. Well done, Lester. Good yeah. reference. Yeah. That Good was, reference. That was top uh, for a reason, too. I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> now some sad news. The, uh, yeah. the old, oldest person in the world has died. A yeah, one hundred and nineteen year old woman from Japan named Kane Tanaka. Nice name. Uh, she was born January second, nineteen o three, the year of the Wright brothers' first controlled flight. So <laughs> that's amazing. That's, uh, that's a little <laughs> that while amazing. back. Uh, during her life, she was uh, she had been partial to chocolate and fizzy drinks. So two things you might think aren't good for you, but hey. Yeah. Almost, she almost hit a buck twenty, so not too bad. Uh, despite her age, she typically woke up at six a.m. and was still learning, often uh, subjects like math. And she loved the classic board game Othello, so remained active. Does anybody know what Othello is? No I don't idea. know that game. I, I know no, it's no, a they, game. No, I, no, I would not no, know no. how to play it though. It's a board game. I've never played it, but All I've right. heard of it. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna have to get uh, brought up to speed on that. Uh, so Japan and Do you have any board game friends? Do you guys have any board game friends? Like uh, my friend Kawar in uh, in New York, they wanted to play a board game every night. I'm like, I don't want to play a board game. They well, that's what they do. They play board games with their families. Yeah, and you know, Brooksy Brooksy likes the board game. I will say this: it gets the family together. Like if the kids are home, if you get them into a little board game, and we bought a couple of funky ones where you're chasing a spy around the thing, but. I'm not a real board game guy. I'll do it to please my family and spend some quality time with my kids. But I don't know board games. You like the? You have any friends where you go over the house and they want to play board games? My my brother in laws like that. They're into yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I had some friends that were not into that too. Hmm. I wouldn't say I'm a board game. Hmm. See, for me, because we don't often play, so if we go over somewhere and someone wants to do that, I totally don't You're mind okay. because it's yeah, something. I mean, if there's drinking involved and, you know, slowly taking off layers of clothing. Yeah, that, that's a must, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you want something like a Monopoly where it just takes forever and then you develop hatred yeah. for the rest of your life. Risk. But... Risk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, uh, the old, I listened to a podcast or read an article about old people. Oh. Um a few months ago and the basic premise of it and I would like your guys feedback on this is that there is a the scientific community is divided there are a lot of there are more 120 year olds which I called I think super centurions did we talk about this at some point um, uh, than ever before in the world uh, a lot in Japan but I think there's more like 120 pluses than ever before. Uh, hold on. And no, no, not no, 120 no, pluses. Sorry, 110. 100 pluses. I think. 100 is a 100 centurion. Pluses. I think 100. I think 110 is a super centurion, and then 120 is something else. Dead. Anyway, there's a there's. I would say the majority of scientists 
believe that we are we are at our max. That, you know, people might live to 122 or 123, but this is it. And then there is another portion, which is fairly substantial, like 34% of the science community that studies aging, that believes that we have not even started to explore it. And within the next century, uh, we're going to see people living to 150, to 160, to 170 years old. Wow. Like in biblical times. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, you think that's possible? Where do you fall? Well, I mean, like, uh, like I could see where things like cancer and and uh, those kinds of diseases get kind of shut down, but I just don't know if heartbeats can go that long. Like, that's a long mm-hmm. time for a heart to beat. I mean, mm-hmm. and maybe if the heart transplants and stuff like that, but I mean, you can't do those kind of surgeries on people when they reach a certain age. So I don't think there we can get much longer. I would, I wouldn't, I'd be shocked if people live much longer than they're living now. What's the oldest someone's ever, ever lived? What's less? What's the, so like 120? What's the oldest person ever? Go ahead, Lester. Not I'm not sure. I'm going to go another way from Puff, though. I'm going to say I don't necessarily want to live that long. Um, I think about uh, one of my comic heroes, Don Rickles. And by the end, I think he was 90 or 91. And all his friends are gone. Everybody he came up with is gone. You know, you don't want that. You know, imagine. I, I, I wouldn't want to live to 120 years old, and none of you guys are alive? I mean, who am I going to do the pod with? Whoa, you know that's I mean? true. Wow, the plan was for all four of us. What if all four of us get to be Super Centurions? Oh, yeah. Super Centurion and Boots podcast. We do the pod. Hold on. Let's just do, wow. let's just right now, let's do our Super Centurion characters doing the podcast, okay. all right? This is called a Little Improv, all right? Okay. I got, I don't know, I got, I got, to, get, I got to get a character. Hey, everybody, I can do I can't do it. This it's is this terrible. Is terrible. Pod, you try Puffy. Try no, it, Puffy. Do old, terrib- old Puffy. I don't, yeah, you're right. Old Puffy. I, you think I'm going to live to 120? No, you'll be the first one gone. We know that. All right, so... Gee. I think we should have a pact, though. If we do live to 110, that whoever Oof. lives the longest gets all the money. <laughs> uh, from... Uh, all the pod money? No, no, no. all money. the money that the family has. You cut out all the great, great grandkids. <laughs> if only if we live to 110. Only if we live to 110. All right. Okay. Um, the, the I was going to say the previous oldest woman was a woman from France who died at I think 118, and she smoked a pack a day to like 110, <laughs> and wow. and would go down to the little bar in her town and have a shot one every day. Uh, and she she lived at home till she was 115, and then she started a fire. She left the stove on or something, and uh, or tried to light her cigarette on the stove, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, they had to put her in a home after that, and she died. For four a years second, later. I thought when you said she lived at home till she was 115, I thought you meant she lived with her parents. <laughs> Like she never moved out. That was the no, that'll be that'll be Darian. That's, Darian's gonna live to 140. All right. Well, sp- speaking of old French women, Jean Calment uh, is the oldest documented person to ever live, 122 years and 164 days. So 122 and a half, pretty much. Wow. Wait a second. Is she wow. from France? Yeah, that's what a French woman would be. Yes. <laughs> uh, she could be from Quebec. There are n- numerous African countries yes. which are what you would say would be French, French countries. Speaking. No, I would refer them by their actual name. That would be the right thing to say. I, uh, I, that might have been the woman. That might have been the one we were talking she, about. She died in 1997. So Does it wow. say anything about her smoking and drinking uh, and uh, well, lighting <laughs> the drinking, apartment on fire? smoking straight West Coasting. Uh, <laughs> well, she is from a small town in France? See, smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something about smoking cigarettes. At an unspecified mm-hmm. time in her youth, she suffered from migraines. Her husband introduced her to smoking, offering cigarettes after meals, but she did not smoke more. Oh. I don't know what uh, maybe, that means. Maybe I embellished the story. Of, yeah, well, maybe it wasn't the same woman. Forcing her to smoke. It's a good thing she outlived them. Well, that's, uh, I like, once again, a uh, very educational portion to the pod. I and so. um, Agreed. Lester, could you do your old man impersonation since mine didn't go so well? Sure. Yeah, man. I was trying oh, to do. I was trying to do gummy. Oh, <laughs> oh less is gonna be the oh, same. <laughs> it's insane. It's dead sexy. I yeah, well, you know what I am? I'm 106 years old. Still got my hair. 
<laughs> you can you know? see I can see I can see you looking like real good at like 84 still. You know what? I have to say, I mean my dad's having some some uh, issues, but he looks amazing right. and he's 80. Like he doesn't look 80. My both my parents look amazing. So That's good. Yeah. Good. I have that's a feeling good. that's what's going to happen to me. So the oldest remaining person now is 118 years old. So How old is okay. the oldest okay. remaining man? Yeah, you guys are making me earn mm. 71. <laughs> 83. Nine, from what I read, nine times out of ten, it's uh, nine of ten people are, are women, right? It's usually one in ten are, yeah. are 100 plus. Okay, so. Oldest living man, I just looked it up. It's Jack Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Benjamin Button. Get the garbage out of here. <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to guess how old the oldest man currently living is? I'm gonna say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 108. Ooh, Lester, I will say 107. Ooh, Jimmy takes a 112. See, damn, that's a terrible. You would you you would suck on the prices, right? You should you should have blocked. It's like if someone else? goes someone goes 480 dollars and someone goes 482 dollars and you go 481, Bob. <laughs> You did park yourself I'm there. be right or nothing. <laughs> Look how angry he is at me. The man's from Venezuela, for for what it's worth, and he's actually gonna turn one thirteen very soon. So nice. All right. Exciting in the uh, Guinness uh, community. Are you done? We should get to listener mail. We. Uh, I, promise I we apologize would. for boring you. You don't want to hear about the hundred and ninety year old turtle. <laughs> Oh, yeah. sorry. You got more? Yeah, there's, I more. Did, I, yeah, there's more. I bet you he have time for you, yeah, Jay. I didn't see that in the notes. Sorry, I missed. I just skimmed through the notes <laughs> I briefly. I sat through the whole week that was. There's a 190, 190-year-old turtle? Yeah, yeah, Jonathan the turtle. He's going to turn 190 this year. <laughs> see, he's, the thing is, he's the oldest known land animal alive. How so. is that possible? Who know, who's been around to document this? He can't tell you. Well, no, Turtles they, they have like trees. They have, they have rings. They have rings. Rings. They knew he was going to be a long time turtle. Yeah, they, so no, like, that's for all turtles. This one. Yeah, they just put it on their shell. There's no chance. He's like uh, sixty. Old timey turtles. All right. And how do they keep track of this dude? They Where is he? Is he? Is he in well, captivity? I don't think it's that hard, James. He's a turtle. Can't get. Uh, I don't. But they still have. It could go. I saw a Finding Nemo. Those turtles get. They could go like hundreds of miles in the Australian. Uh, very realistic. I swam with turtles. They're great. Uh, you guys don't want to hear about the... Uh... <laughs> nice hat on. I wanted to get that in. <laughs> pro turtle. I'm a pro turtle guy. It's a good thing we got your stats in there. Uh... Guys, guys, before we move on to the next section, can I just, can I just say that I, I'm very pro turtle? <laughs> I do love turtles. Uh, since you never read about the turtle, there's no chance you watched the rugby video. Is there anybody... Are there, any the are, there, are there any anti-turtle people around <laughs> I want to know, Ooh, my listeners. Like maybe turtles. I'm sure. What's that? What was? The, what was uh, the guy Shredder? Shredder's anti turtle. He does not like them. Wasn't Shredder? Oh no, Shredder. What was, was the rat? Shredder the bad guy? No, wasn't he the rat? <laughs> wasn't he friends oh, with like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Yeah. yeah, Shredder's the good guy. Oh, what's, what's the bad guy? <laughs> That's Gargamel. Gargamel. <laughs> he doesn't Gargamel. like Smurfs. Uh. Didn't we have another video a couple weeks ago of some turtle going after a guy, or is that just something I saw on Twitter? No, you saw that on uh, <laughs> Nature is Angry TikTok? or something. Was that the one, the turtle trying to bite the dog, and the dog walks away? I, I saw that one a couple times. I don't know. You know, I think the last week's podcast was better, and that was the one where I just didn't remember anything. <laughs> Don't worry, I have a feeling it's going to happen again next week when you bring up the uh, rugby the video. Turtle. No, the rugby video that Jimmy's yeah. going to bring Sixers, up. Sixers within five, 11 minutes good. left. All right, James, good. did you watch the rugby video? Sorry, it's seven. Uh, the rugby video, yes, I saw that. I, I retweeted it myself, oh. me and... Uh, the other day. That's beautiful. You yeah. and lots of other people. I was going to say, me and Rex Chapman, that I realized I wasn't really equating myself. I probably saw it on Rex Chapman's account. <laughs> you guys both made it popular. All right, let's move on to... <laughs> Hold on. That, 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 that rugby that's video it? was amazing. That's, that's all we're going to do? Well, Did you play the rugby video yet? It's, you it was, seem to want to move on. Puffy wants to get his... Here, he, I, here, I got only one question. Okay. And you know, I, I don't like to be the cynic. Yes. I like to be the positive person. Wow. I think Stoff is more cynical. Wow. But the audio was so good that these guys were clearly mic'd. 
The coach sounded like he was mic'd because when he started talking, it was super okay. clear. So the coach is mic'd for some sort of video they're doing on the team or something, yeah. right? Or he's on probation. Any chance the kid is a little bit of a theatrical and saw his moment to be a star? And, you know, I hope not. I hope not because I thought he was fantastic. Let's, let's Don't take this away from us. Unfortunately, in the era we live in, there's always a chance of that. It's unfortunate, wow. but that's the way it is. Wow. I, I think so. This kid, I, what, you this don't think so? for sure on the good. He's a good kid. Just a leader. So, on it's, it's, it's You're just a fun. brilliant, brilliant producer. The way <laughs> you cut this podcast week after week with Jimmy not remembering a f- thing is incredible. <laughs> You're a hero. Yeah. It's pretty good. I heard that every week. Uh, however, no, I'm just surprised because I remember when there was that kid, that kid in kindergarten... And you guys all rallied behind him, and I thought it was fixed because, yeah, like, it really felt like the teacher was feeding him lines. In this one here, this felt a lot more authentic to me. I thought, like, wow, what a good it guy. did. It did feel authentic, but I just yeah. and you know, even if it, even if he was aware that there was a mic and camera on, uh, that doesn't mean that he still did a cool thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I always yeah. say, if you're putting on a show, at least you're you're still you're comforting a friend. You're still doing a good thing. So, uh, exactly, Coach Cal, same thing. Good thing. Damn. Yeah, that's a good Damn thing. Damn straight. And let me say, uh, let me say, I just want to make sure that I, I said that, but I do believe the kid was authentic. I'm just saying this day and age, there's always a possibility, unfortunately. Some people are. And you do yeah, feel right. I do a great job on the podcast. <laughs> uh, I just made that up. I, I think you're <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> that's just exactly. kidding. <laughs> Stop. You know I love you. I, I, I tell you all the time. Of course. Moving on to listener mail. Listener mail. Let's listen to listener the mail. Listener mail. Thank you for listening. I'm only doing this because yes, we earlier it. in this er, earlier in the season we seem to struggle with Lester's lyrics, so I'm uh, so you letting people them. know that I I, I I know the songs. Go ahead. Like what do we got listener mail this week? Well, we tweeted a picture of uh, Puffy's uh, birthday cake for the Queen. <laughs> that was yeah, very well quite done. A, quite a few uh, responses there. Uh, that was actually Le- that Even was Lester's Tanya idea. Asked me so about that. she was like, "What was that?" Executed by Stoff, though. Oh, well, Tanya did not like that, eh? Well, what was that? I don't know. I thought it was a pretty good looking cake. Uh, Carol Waglin, uh, on the other hand, said, "Well, this will haunt my nightmares for a while." She did take a shot. That was a bit of a shot at you, Puff. That bit of a, a shot, shot, but you know, uh, John Pinkerton wrote, uh, "I'm glad all I got was the flu." Also a little harsh. Uh, Snack bites Pete, not to be confused with Snake bites Pete. R- writes, yeah. uh, "What does he? What does he get?" David Hearn on his birthday. So. Oh. That is <laughs> very good. Uh, we had some more feedback regarding the uh, mouse or mice in your house. Uh, oh, Kyle Barrel Maker wrote, "Listening to the Rubber Boots podcast." James Dutty, sorry to tell you, but for every one mouse you see, there are literally 100 nearby. At least one mouse can turn into 127 mice in 50 days. Now, I want to know exactly where he got that stack because that's some incredible information. (laughs) One to 127 in 150 days. So, Jimmy, did you take care of this problem professionally or are you still living? Well, when I went went to New York City for the weekend and... uh, Saw some of the mice's uh, larger cousins oh, yeah. <laughs> on the on the subway. <laughs> yeah, they got the metro passes. I put a uh, I put a not a trap, but the the really horrible stuff, which I hate to do. It's I guess they eat that poisons them. I put some of that in the uh, in the pantry. Well, hold on. And unfor- Watch unfortunately, unfortunately, Dar- Darian's boyfriend got into it. And <laughs> R.I.P. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> Wesley, I didn't mean you any harm. Uh, no, no. Uh, so, no, I you put it in a place where the dogs can't get it. Because you remember, I told you about this crazy Spider-Man mouse that climbs the shelves yeah. and everything. Uh, but there's been no sign since. Uh, does who, who wrote that again, John Pinkerton? Uh, no, that was Kyle Barrelmaker. Okay, Kyle, the 100 to 1 thing. Like, I understand that if you see one mouse, there's probably more mice. But the 100 to 1 thing terrifies me a little bit. Like, I could see it being a, an 8 to 1 ratio oh, or a 6 to 1 ratio. It's a huge Not a 100 number. to it 1. It's a huge number. Not a, I want to know the math. That just doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. And and how does he get the 100 to 100? So he, so he's seven, saying the 100 mice in my house mated and created 27 more mice in a month? 
No, they created 126 more mice in 150 days. No, he said 100 mice created 126 more mice. Didn't he? No. One mouse can turn into 127 mice. Oh. Oh, so. I see what you mean. And I actually don't understand. If it's one mouse, how could it turn into more? The, yeah, one mouse can. Yeah, yeah, partner. With one mouse. Like, yeah. yeah, one mouse is just doing. He can't do he's one mouse. Can't do the puppy his, by himself. Yeah, he's just getting the numbers up. Every mouse is the Virgin Mary. Like, come on. Perhaps, uh, <laughs> Ji writes in. Apparently, if a mouse can fit its nose in somewhere, they can fit their whole body through that hole. So yeah, that is also <laughs> true. Something to think about. Riss Donaldson writes in regarding our commercial, what I always think about when watching the Dustin commercial is how Phil Mickelson would have no problem doing that shot because he's a left. Have you guys seen that Dustin Johnson commercial Which one? where he, he turns his club <laughs> sideways? Is that new? Is it a new one? I enjoy that commercial. Now whenever it comes what up, just my blood boils. <laughs> Uh, oh, and we have some uh, information here from the desk of Sean Morrison, who's uh, always going through. Oh, what a guy. He, legend. Legend. Uh, he made yeah. it up to season two, episode eight, and said, finally figured out where the Mr. Noodle reference came from. Mr. Noodle! <laughs> He's only on season two in his, in his analoging librarian work on our pot. Well, I I think poor what sucker's got was, six more seasons to go in. Well, he was working on the gazebo with his brother, and he put a, one episode on, so he's probably not a lot to listen with his brother anymore. All right, so he's right, rather right. put off. Uh, so right. it's just going a little slower right now, but he'll get there for sure. He'll get there. Uh, Eighty-five, seventy-three Raptors, six fifty-seven this left. Is happening. We, this is we, happening. When I originally sold the timing of this podcast to my podcast members, I said, "Hopefully, we'll be done to watch the second half." Yeah, and we're not <laughs> even through halfway halfway through Sean Morrison's comments yet. So. Well, you know what? We should be able to do a live ending. At least that will be the one positive thing. A live ending to the game. Uh, maybe during the though. the Gold Bar League sequence. I, I can't All wait right? to put that in the description of the pod. The guys react live to the ending of, two, of yeah. Monday night's game. <laughs> a game that's four days ago. Say, find out who wins game five. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to sell it. That's the way it used to be in like old timeies, 1880s. They wouldn't find out till five days later. So that's what we're yeah, doing. Replay the game. Thank you. Pascal Siakam came alive in the fourth quarter <laughs> with 12 points. <laughs> Jimmy, you could have been an, uh, an, uh, like one of those early uh, NBA, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's still NBA time. reporters. Old timey baseball guy. Live from Ebbets Field here where the Yankees have done it again. <laughs> that's awesome. What? <laughs> Are you, are you got anything more stuff? I, gonna... I do. I just don't want to interrupt the <laughs> live breaking up the game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I think this is attention. a good segment. I can take this segment off, so you just keep on rolling through things. <laughs> All right, perfect. Uh, Sean Morrison uh, talks about how your family wasn't able to watch you at the Masters, Jimmy. Just not along. Uh, you can select any feed when streaming, including a bunch of bonus feeds. There's way more options you, than using a TV. They literally had to try not to see you on TV to miss you. Wow. That's well, that's not true. Every bonus feed that is on TV is like we have it on, on the show. Like there's maybe one feed was on TSN.ca. No, holes but aren't, 15 they and 16 aren't or something. certain ones just fixed holes? Yes, yeah, sure. but yeah. no, like There's every like three feed... or four. I don't think they're all on the TSNs, Jimmy. I think they are. I don't know about that. Uh, also, I trust Stoff to land the plane. The only problem would be that the plane would probably break down if he's the pilot. So it's accurate. Cool. I like that. that is true. Yeah, we're screwed regardless. Um, so hold on a second. Sean's listening to like modern day podcasts. Yeah, he's and going back ones? and forth. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the modern day. He's in the modern day podcast. Of he is doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Modern, modern day podcasts, as opposed to the ones from the, the middle evil times. The classical <laughs> from the tens, Jimmy. From the tens. Ah, the tens. Yes, the tens. Uh, some guy from Coburg writes in, this podcast is hashtag flat money. When Roddy lays his voice down on a track. Flat money. When Emilio puts the oil on Roddy's back. Flat money. When Roddy hosts a show on TSN. Flat money. When Roddy make love to Helen Duran. Flat money. Roddy's face. Flat money. Roddy's head. Flat money. Roddy body. Flat money. No underwear. Flat money. Go ahead, fool. Ask all the ladies east to west. They know Roddy's beef dip is the best. Love it. 
obviously. Oh, so he's ah. about five. Se- he's also five seasons behind. <laughs> Back when the podcast was good, he's still enjoying it. Uh, our friend Ho, uh, who we'll get to shortly, hey. writes in: Bump oh. is an apocalypse sports trivia legend. He is. What does that mean? What does that mean? I didn't there, understand that either. So there's this. Uh, they've tried it. My buddies have tried. My buddy Ho and and Chris, they do it, and it's like this. Um, it's like a sports trivia contest that takes place. It's a bit um, by your own, what's it, honor honor system. Okay. And uh, But it's like really hard sports questions, like not like, you know, not the average stuff for, mm-hmm. for casual fans. And um, Rydal was telling me he does it and he did pretty well. And then I mentioned it to Ho and Chris and they, they knew who he was. They were like, oh, that's oh, just from amazing. in it. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, now, they, 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 you're they saying really that it's uh, on the honor system. So, is there a chance that Bump is just a really good chance? Bump cheater? could be the Lance Armstrong of <laughs> yes. this thing. <laughs> not, not, not only is he Googling everything, he's also bullying the other guys. Yes, he is. He's a complete train wreck. But they're they're all uh, but everyone's falling in line right now. Right now we're only at ye- like yellow uh, jersey four, so he's still got a little run <laughs> so runway yes, to go before he's ex- before he's exposed and has a thirty for thirty <laughs> yeah. on him. Nice. Hey, I have a live. See, this is a, now that we're doing oh, so these we live. Go, we now go live to Jimmy for an update on the Raptors game. R- no, uh, well, real time pod. Uh, the Raptors have gone cold here, but they're still up by nine. Uh, with four fifty three left, but they could have been up by about fifteen right now. They've gone a little bit cold and. Thank God, Danny. Dan, thank God, Danny Green's airballing threes from the corner. Yes. So we're okay. Um, uh, this is a live, uh, a live. This is a recent since the pod started. I guess we, we are. Are we streaming live now, stuff? Yeah, we're all over yeah, the we're, internet we're right as we speak. We're on TSN three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, that's I guess from from last week. This is from Matthew M W Bauer says uh, out of curiosity, uh, James Duffy, how many times has Brooksy been called Kaylee? Since last week's episode, in order to help with their newfound fame due to Rubber Boots podcast, uh, I have no recollection of this. You guys know what he's talking about. No idea. <laughs> How do you guys have no <laughs> recollection of this? The the yeah. video from TikTok. There's Brooksy's new name is Kaylee. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Jake and Kaylee. Remember those? Jake results? and Kaylee. Yes, I get it now. I get it. <laughs> Look, it's been a long week. All right. Oh, OG with a three. Let's go. Let's go. Come on now. Come you know what I can't wait for? If this gets down to the final few seconds and the Raptors hang on, you know what I'm bringing out? What? Every dog has oh, its Jesus. day. OG Ananobi, <laughs> this one is yours. Scores. <laughs> Scores. Uh, what, do you, what do you got now? Uh, I got Chuli Uwe who says, uh, <laughs> you put a drop in before you go and zero smell. He's referring to just the drop order eliminators. You guys wanted to know how they work. Oh, nice. Nice. Do you even remember what that's referring to? No, no, no clue. I don't. Know. <laughs> no. It, nope. It's got to be no something idea. with the mice. I just surely hope you guys remember a little thing called the gold bar, bar league. league. I got my picks in this week. I love gold, and so do you. Do 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 do. Join the gold bar league, and you can have some too. Do, 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 do. It's the gold, the gold barley. Come on and join the gold, the gold barley. That's safe, doesn't it? I was in, uh, mine were in like three minutes after the note came yeah, out. Probably could have waited longer. And Puffy, do you and I, you and I did, like, I think we surprised people, right? In the tandem thing, everybody expected us to be last. How did we do, Stop. We were like third, weren't we? Okay, okay, well, we were going to get there, but you were definitely oh. last. Um, <laughs> we, we were, were t- last? <laughs> you were tied for last with two other guys on this podcast. Oh my so, God. Oh, spoiler no. alert. Spoiler uh, alert. How, many, uh, how embarrassing is that? Did uh, and Skorolnik and uh, uh, and can Ho I one? get through this? <laughs> no. <laughs> don't, don't give it away. Sorry. Jesus, Sorry. we had a it's whole, a TV it's a, a it's a TV deal. timeout. So I'm I got you got my full attention right now. <laughs> Great. Uh, one of our listeners, Ala Apfel, has found us a sponsor for the Gold Bar League. Oh, nice. Uh, the other night, the Golden Knights tweeted out their Gold Bar first start of the game, brought to you by Gold Bar Whiskey. 
And Gold Bar wow. Whiskey is uh, awarded the double gold in San Francisco 2016. And their Twitter page actually says you must be legal drinking age to follow us. So I'm not sure nice. how they enforce wow. that, but should we reach out potentially? Uh, well, would, will like we reach thing? out? Will they will they give us a cease and desist order on our, our name of our league? <laughs> Next week we come back <laughs> as the bronze Here's bar the league. Silver, <laughs> silver rings league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that might happen uh, too. Hey, I think I, I think we definitely should reach out. Uh, that's a that's a golden tie-in right there, baby. Yep. Uh, Neil wrote in, "Darn it, missed the uh, deadline. Moving my daughter, move home from university, got stuck in traffic on the 401." One piece of good news for Neil: he was in the chat on Thursday, so at least he salvaged one gold bar. So nice. even though he missed the deadline, very important to do that. <laughs> What's going on? Gonna... <laughs> what? I was about I was about to interrupt and say I like I just decided to do a quick search to see if I could find any other brands with the name Gold Bar in them. <laughs> oh yeah. lord! And so I'm like, hey guys, I was about to say I found another one, Gold Bar Stools. It's a company that makes gold gold bar stools, and then I realized it was just Gold Bar Stools. It was many different, <laughs> many, many different available uh, on a lot of different. A lot Otherwise of different known sites. as yellow bar stools. <laughs> <laughs> what if they still sent us a cease and desist? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Uh, uh, Baz Watson, aka Trojan Baz, uh, aka our number one fan in Wales, uh, tweeted out some advanced metrics for our bonus question last week. Uh, nice. So we gave some people some advice on who to uh, bet on. So those doubles results coming in first and earning anyone who picked them two gold bars. The odds couple, Aaron Kurolnik and Ho, winning with the other gold bars. They were the favorites. Twenty nine percent of the people picked yeah. them, uh, including myself, including Jimmy, including pick- Lester. So oh, yeah, I picked us, Jimmy. You, you idiot. are the only one on this pod, Puffy, who bet on yourself, and you I, finished I, tied for last. I I did not hesitate to pick those two. I give Kurolnik a hard time, but he's a talented mofo. Gary Trent Jr., 4-3, 15-point lead. People are leaving. They are getting up, and they are headed for the exits. The Raptors have done it. No. I'm going to declare no, it with 3.15 no. right, left. No, we we are no, going no, to... No. Oh. no. no. Hard hard three, everybody. Oh I'm not down. editing this out, by the way. If they, if <laughs> they lose in That's the end, fair. I'm just staying Don't be in. Fair. I'm not really doing play-by-play on this. You know, I was just... I will people were it. heading for the exits, though. All right. Well, I feel bad. You guys have been here too long. It's a Monday night. You guys could all be this doing is fun things. It's making Monday too. So, do you have anything else on the Gold well, Bar League to... we need to say? Do we need to give anybody some credit? <laughs> we literally what? just love making. We literally just started the segment. Love making Monday. Yeah, love making Monday. <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah, isn't it for everyone? That was that was that was another that was another problem with uh, New York. You know, you're, you know, if I was in a hotel. Mm-hmm. But I was in like you know next door to the next door to my friends, and on one side like right next door, I don't know how thing is 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 Kawar and his wife, and then on the other is his son, and I you know I can't be doing that stuff. Hey, they invited you. They take no matter how there. she tried. I like Brooksy. Come on, just lay off. All right, I know it, it's hard. Just lay off. It must have been that you hoodie. <laughs> and then and then she Rebecca De Mornayed me. What? Oh, what's that e- mean? Ever make love on a train, Joel? <laughs> oh, that's risky business, right? Yeah. I like to make my references all towards '80s movies. You know that. Fresh She's quite the bombshell shot at one point, right? Re- Rebe- Rebecca, Rebecca De Mornay yeah. in Risky Business is as good as it gets. Is that it? is, is she's fantastic. She's fantastic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she is fantastic in that film. Unbelievable. That would have been a bit of a coming of age film for a young Jimmy. Want to get high, Joel? Jesus. Uh, that was that was uh, the movie of my high school years. I would say yeah. risky business. Still one of my favorite all time films. Mm. Kids out there, all the college kids that yeah. listen to us, go check out the risky business. I think it still holds up. Do you think you could? That's pull the off one like with uh, old time rock and roll, right? With the big scene with him in the underwear and the shirt and all yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Never seen. I wouldn't it. be the. You never saw. Come on, you never saw risky business. It's awesome. I've never seen a movie top to bottom. Sorry. Wow. I guess it kind of, yeah, you know, 
I don't know. Come on, I need a f rebound. Come on. Oh, yeah, wow. that's a foul. Uh, it's coming back to Toronto, this kids. Is, this is the best pot ever. Hey, listen, I'll say this. Game six will be on TSN, Canada's sports leader. That is good. That's going to be a choice for our viewers on Thursday night, whether to watch the Raps game six or the Sens regional broadcast that Puffy and I will be a part of. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know they'll what? already be watching this heading into it. I was going to so say, maybe... they're going to be listening to game five on this podcast. That's no, that'd be a fun little primer. That's a fun thing to do. Yeah. You can it's true. get you fired up. Hey guys, yeah, you you're, you're having the... fun right now listening to this. You listen to the pod live, and then you get fired up for the game. And by the way, no offense to the Sens, you know, I, uh, we all love the Sens here. It's just it is kind of the season's over. Let's yes, face it, right? This is this is a playoff game. So I am gonna go, uh, I'm gonna make a prediction that uh, Thursday night game is a bit of an all time crowd. Raptors crowd. I think it's going to be a, they're going to be there and they're going to be loud and they're going to rattle these Sixers. We're going seven. Well, look, imagine I think if this I, goes I back definitely, to Philly. I'll say this. I'll say this. I think I think it goes seven now. Absolutely. Well, when Raptors in Philly play series, they go seven and it ends on the final shot. I just love that we're in garbage town. Garbage time. Uh, sorry, that was not a shot at Philly. <laughs> Ooh, now you just gave bulletin board material. Oh, <laughs> local Joel and Dean will be talking about Philly that. garbage town. <laughs> Keith, hey, Keith Jones, <laughs> Keith Jones, is going to be ripping I, you on the morning radio. I, I am a national podcaster. The, the other international podcaster, local TV man, rips. Philly By tomorrow down. morning, we're gonna blow up. I do multiple national telecasts and multiple regional ones. You're going to be on the W fan in Philly tomorrow. Should I reach out to Josh Lewenberg and tell him to ask him beat in post game? Yeah, just be, what bring I was it try. up. That he just said on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying was, I just can't believe they're in Philadelphia in uh, with the way the first two games of the series went. That they're in Philly in garbage time. It's uh, I did not see tonight. Happen. Remarkable. No, unbelievable. No, neither did it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're down to the final 15 seconds. It's 103.88 wow. as the clock counts down. Wow. Everybody thought it was over, but no. We are going back to Toronto for a game six. Ladies and gentlemen, every dog has its day. Raptors, this one is yours. There you go. With more, here's Kate Burness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can we finish this damn podcast? What do you got to say about the gold barley? I have the entire segment to go through whenever you are ready. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Just cut it down. Do the Coles Notes version. <laughs> Whatever. Chewy Louie, great. Ho, yay. Snake Bites Pete. Way to go. Buffy, Jimmy. Oh, you guys suck. See you next week. <laughs> you have just taken the glorious history I know. Of, of this beloved league. Bar league and made a mockery of it. <laughs> You, sir, are... <laughs> yeah. All right. these poor people waiting to hear their names called out in the Gold Bar League segment have to sit through the entire fourth quarter first, only to be insulted <laughs> to their faces. Gold McDonald, some guy from Coburg. <laughs> they Gold McDonald is a legend. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> the man went nine for ten this week. <laughs> <laughs> Only he him and Marcus. That's unbelievable. For those who don't don't remember, Gold McDonald is El Kiff from last year, so he was in the plot. Oh, El Kiff. Le Kiff. Mm. Coming back, baby. Great name. Gold is great name. Piss now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Regain my composure. All right. Odds couple, eleven gold bars. They take it. Bump and run. Only 13% of the people believed in them. They were the second lowest. <laughs> they came in second with 10 bars. The Prophylactics, Andrew Arsenault and Chewy Louie. Uh, nine gold bars. Step Brothers, that's Carlo and Kaz. Eight gold bars. And then us four losers, six well, gold what bars. Are we, we're called Team Discovery Channel? Yeah. It was, a, Why was, it, it was the name assigned to. Six gold bars? <laughs> it was the yeah. name assigned to. Combined? I thought... I thought we did well, good. So, uh, me and you got six, Lester, and then Jimmy okay. and Puffy got six. You know, six. does anybody check stuff on these things? Is it uh, like, because I feel like I did better than that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I was. <laughs> you could check by, you know, remembering what you did. Did I win five and Puffy only got one? Yeah, no. That's how, hold I on, I have the three. breakdown summary here. 
I had three. Uh, let me see. And wait a second. Do the do the extra bonus ones count no. in your total? No. No, it actually says... Oh. You, do you see in my notes where it says does not include <laughs> bonus bars? <laughs> yeah, I saw that at the bottom. I just saw that. Like, literally, wow. it said it right under our name. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> basically, uh, this is a fun thing to think about. Uh, Chewy Louie and AK both got as many gold bars as... Uh, uh, our two teams combined, so <laughs> they got six and we got six together. Duffy got four, Puffy got two, uh, I got two, and Lester got four. So, so AK, A oh, I only got two. Oh, AK spends his whole life on this. He has no life. Yeah, he's single, so he sits there for four hours and he goes through all the little details and all his little websites where he gets his right. information. I love how you're and gonna turn him winning into something negative. So I got I got this email. I was on the streets of New York City. I looked at it for two seconds. I went mom 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 mom. I didn't even know who the home. I didn't even bother to check check the home teams. You're you're proud. So I, it's imp like I, it's impressive that I even register on the. Uh, what place am I in? That you participate oh. in the league. <laughs> yeah, I deserve <laughs> praise. I deserve praise for even putting in my putting in my picks. You bastards. In fairness, <laughs> we've missed. Everyone's missed multiple tweaks. Not me. I'm, hey, uh, I'm haunted by this day in and day out. I missed too. So I'm gonna. Who's Sam? Sam is winning April, and he's winning the overall. Who's Sam? Everybody want to. Uh, Sam is Sam. I I'm, we can't give out their last names. Although I do. What if Sam it's the What if it's the son of Sam? Oh, that's true. No, that was Berkowitz. They got him. <laughs> well, I know. But I'm just saying. Cool. April <laughs> April standings. Sam 22. Chris 21. Some guy from Coburn, Chewy Louie, and Rubber Boot Man. Coburn, not Coburn. Coburn. Coburg's close Jesus. to uh, Wellington. It's uh, it's uh, yeah. PC country. I like that guy. Your pu your dog was close to being called Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> Max Gattafoni. Uh, yes, Max Gattafoni is in second along with Marcus and Hole. Thirty-five bars. They trail oh, Sam. A legend. Then Chris, some guy from Coburg. Matt, Gold McDonald, and Han Solo all have thirty-four. So that rounds it out our top eight. <laughs> Is Han Solo, uh, is that a Star Wars fan, or is that like a puffy masturbation reference? Could be both. Whoa. Could be both. That's what Han makes Solo, it right in. Right in. I want to know. Uh, we got three people tied at 33 bars. Chewy Louie, David, and Pharma Mag 1. So that's pretty much the people right there in contention for the final spots in the Platinum League. 20 more people between 28 and 32 bars. So still a lot to fight for in the last week. Of the gold but bar. We, we all automatically get in the Platinum League, right? Okay, we, I answered that last week and I'll go through it again if you need me to, but no. <laughs> there's wow. somebody named Dan Daman and then Dan the Man. Yeah, so and I And there's somebody this... named Why Notch and Why Not A. Yeah, so basically, uh, I just wanted to point these out because they're similar uh, so people don't confuse them. Remember what you're putting, but Dan the Man and Dan the Man are separated by one gold bar. And uh, why not A all together has 30 gold bars, while why not A spaced out as 25. So, wow, some interesting wow. stuff. But. Damn. All right. Uh, Talent division. Done now? This is this is Jimmy. No, hold on, hold on. I, I want to know if uh, we're all in the, the the platinum league. No, we're not all in the platinum league. <laughs> why? We Just let me get through year. this. At least go for the standings here. Talent division. AK back in the lead after a great week. 34 gold bars. I'm in second with 33, Duthie in third with 27, Lester with 24. In the first up division, Bob Weeks is pretty much running away with it with 28 bars. Carlo and Puffy tied for second with 23, Cause 19, and Bump with 14. Bump, at least decent because he just got started. Yeah, uh, just started. So next week we're going to have our... Uh, after obviously we have our last week here the following week we'll have our last chance tournament and the page playoffs um, and yeah so basically do you want to know how uh, you can get into the platinum league yes all right so first place in the talent division gets it automatically third place plays the winner of the first up division and the winner of that will play whoever finished second. So only two people out of all the talent and the first up division will get well, in. Last so the year platinum we all league. got in it. Well, that, that was last year. This is a serious competition now. There's way too many serious competitors for you jokesters to be getting in here after missing weeks. So we're going to be doing recaps of a league we're not in. 
Well, uh, two of us will be in it. I mean, we'll see. We'll have to see who well, it is. Be Bob However, Weeks hold, hold on. Bob. Because you wanted a page playoff, I did do this for you, Puffy. Yeah. So basically, whoever finishes first will be promoted automatically. Okay. In to the uh, into the talent division for next year. Okay. But we're gonna expand the talent division next year by one. So the first, whoever finishes second and third in the first up division, will face off. The winner of that will play whoever finishes last. In the talent division, okay. loser gets relegated, winner goes up. So okay. you can you can get back in. I got an idea though. Oh, when Puffy and I get eliminated, mm -hmm. we do the Rubber Boots podcast, brought to you by BetSafe.net. Yeah, and I'll, I'll do everything the, by the, myself. Yeah, for sure. The Gold Bar League becomes the Lester and Staff show. Lester and Staff show <laughs> in the Gold Bar League. Lester and Staff show. We talked about it. I love gold. I don't think it will feel very different, to be honest with you. I love gold, Lester and Staff. I love gold <laughs> on the Lester and Staff show. Okay. All right. Guys, that was great. That was a great yeah, podcast. That was, that was like incredible. two and a half freaking hours. The Raptors won. It's a successful day for everybody. Going to pick up Gracie at Queens tomorrow. My my whole family's coming back together. I'm going to feel whole again. Nice. I think I'm going to do do much better. I've had two down weeks in a row now, uh, I think, on the pod. Last week, I had dementia. This week, I, I just bored you with my New York stories. Yeah. And then I was distracted by the Raptors. So, uh, promise. We're just going to keep improving. Just keep week, getting better, be better every week. Keep getting better every single week. All right? Good luck, Jimmy. Slow clap. Uh, we'll see you next time, everybody, on the uh, the Rubber Boots Podcast brought to you by BetSafe.net. Also, just a reminder, uh, on the Gold Bar League, uh, the, the Lester and Stoff show, uh, they'll be handing out a, uh, a stealth driver from our friends at TaylorMade. Lester, we've been over the audio that we hear on your microphone, all right? The audience isn't even aware of the clean, the full cleaning staff that is going on in your whenever you speak. Let's just all of us mute our mics so we, just for a second so we can know what Stoff has to deal with every week, except for Lester. Lester, leave his on. I think we got That's it. The, that's the background noise he's got to deal with. Lester said very appropriately when we started the season, hey, guys, we got to keep these to like 40 minutes. Okay, and uh, I think tonight we feel like we're like two hours in, aren't we? Realistically, we're an, an hour 20 in. There's about 47 minutes of usable content. <laughs> okay, and, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, so we could use 10 more. Hey, uh, you could cut out my whole New York thing. Just pretend I didn't go to New York. <laughs> Just cut out the first 25 minutes. Hey. How are ya? I got a question that I really wanna ask ya. Wait. Don't hang up. I need to know so I'm gonna try and push my luck. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? And do you like the dunk tank at the fair? I know it's a little strange. My obsession with your choice of footwear in the rain. I know that you're on TV. But I need you to put your boots up on the desk for me. Are you wearing your Hawaii boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your Hawaii boots tonight? And do you like the dunk tank at the fair? This is the part they call the bridge. A bridge has water under it With rubber boots you can wade in the water Just don't fall in Don't fall in Don't fall in, don't fall in Are you wearing your whole rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your whole rubber boots tonight? And do you like a dunk tank? At the fair at the fair.
Hang up, please. Somebody? Hey? Hey? Anyone?